haven't seen it at least for six or seven years before I shipped it here. It was hanging uh, either in my studio or uh, spread on the floor of my, of my house. I started making drugs in about the uh, late 60s. When I was collecting drugs, I, I was meeting also the tribal people, the weavers, and I was fascinated by their job. These are okay to walk on. I mean, of course, in museum you don't do that, but these are mm, tough rugs. They are from a period that I was very uh, hungry for colors. I, I mean, the bronze didn't satisfy me. It's colorless, and I uh, definitely wanted to do color uh, art and uh, screen prints, paintings, and rugs. Uh, they kind of made up for, the, for that. The good thing about the tribal weavers is they don't follow exactly your colors or your, you know, your patterns, and they make some, some changes according to their own, own feelings. I think this is a collaboration between the two, two artists, or one artist and a craftsman, ex executor, and I like this collaboration and uh, that's why it comes something different. They inject their spirit, their art, into their rug, weaving like this. The rug weaver must know everything from the beginning, and not by not. This was woven a mother and a daughter, and uh, it was not easy to give them a drawing because the, the tribal women, they, they cannot read the drawings, but they want something, a bigger scale. This is very different than what they do traditionally. And that's why I got into color screen prints. Without the screen prints, it, it was not possible to do it. You know, it's like a family when they are all together. They look good together. My very main team is poet, and you see a few of them here. Iranians are very much followers of the poets. Uh, this is a part of the daily life culture. I mean, every conversation, there is a word or two of, of poetry. Nightingale is the companion of the poet, because poet is up all night, and uh, Nightingale is up all night. Nightingale sings for the rose and poet writes for the beloved. I was picking up a subject, a traditional subject, and, but uh, expressing it completely differently, away from all the tradition. That one also is a traditional subject. It's a Farhad the Mountain Carver. It's like Romeo and Juliet of Iran. Here I have uh, sat him on a, a, a chair uh, squeezing lemon. I, nothing else. <laughs> and here my nightingale cannot sing because there's a lock on his beak. And so. That's the kind of thing I like to play with. I think I was very fortunate that uh, I was born in a country that was so rich in art in, and in poetry. Uh, they became like my, uh, my tools. I have always been uh, interested about the uh, social and political life of the country I live, my country, Iran. But it's not direct. My interpretation is not direct. People cannot read it, really. But there was, I mean, putting a lock on the nightingale beak. Of course, it's not too different than putting a lock on humans. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad I saw them. Oh, here is. 
My last name, I seldom use my last name, but here is Tanavoli. Uh, uh, that's odd. I, I had forgotten about it. <laughs> that's a good thing, you discover something. Thank you.